I enjoyed this last Sunday because it reminded me of a scripture that says, you have not because you ask not, ask and you shall receive. And a lot of times I run into people that will either whine about their condition, complain about the state of their relationship, of where they're at or what they're going through, or in some way blame someone for everything else in their life, except be real about it. And I, I just don't get that completely. You see, I understand hiding yourself. You know, I understand putting on airs or trying to, you know, kind of like keep people distant. But let's be honest for a minute. Why fake it? Why lie? Why not be truthful when you're dealing with it at church, in church, or you're a Christian? Or you know better, but you just won't go there to admit it? I, I just don't get it. Why not? You see, I understand someone coming up to you and say, Hey, hey, hey person, how you doing? I started to use a person's name, and believe me, if I use that person, that's the last person that's having problems right now. But then again, he might. Maybe that's why the Lord put him in my mind. Okay, Lord, take care of him. But no, seriously. Um, if you're Joe Blow, or you're Tom, Dick, or Harry, or you're, you know... Uh, Indian Chief, you know, the old poem that says, you know, Doctor, Lawyer, Indian Chief, or whatever it may be. What's up? I mean, haven't you learned yet, you know, in all these counseling sessions, and all these Dr. Oz, or Oprah Winfrey's, or television sitcoms, or some kind of media that you've been watching, that, you know, one of the first things you got to do is you got to come clean. I mean, come on, you got to be honest. You know, one of the things I always hated, and I hated it with a purple passion. I mean, I just, good thing this is stone. Ouch, <laughs> that hurts. But I hated it, man. Talk about beating your head against a rock. <laughs> wow, hey, I just found a new medium. Guess what? <laughs> I want to show you what my life is like. <laughs> Ow, that is stone, oh man. But why are you beating your head against a rock? Stupid. I mean, here you are, you're at church or you're at some place where you could get help or at least start the process, and you're going to say, you know, somebody comes up and says, well, yeah, how you doing? I'm fine, I'm fine, you know. Never mind, you're in the parking lot, you know, you're just slapping the snot out of your wife or you were yelling and screaming at your kids or you were doing something stupid that, you know, if anybody was watching, and they are, you know, that, you know, you'd be embarrassed to be confronted by it. Oh, it wasn't me. No, it had to been somebody else. Right. But what I used to hate with a purple passion was people would come up to me. I mean, at Big Calvary, seriously. You know, and they would they'd say things to me, you know, and this was like, you know, when Romaine was there and there were different pastors growing up that became mega pastors nowadays and you know, they they'd come up to me and they, somebody'd come up to me and say, How you doing? I'd say, Oh man, terrible You know, I said, I'm really struggling. Oh, I'm so sorry, you know, and they'd wander off. Oh, well thanks. Bye. Or I'd say, you know, not so good. You know, I was kind of feeling kind of ill. They were gone. Don't ask if you don't want to know. I mean, hey, let's be real. You're supposed to speak the truth in love and be ready to receive the truth, to put it bluntly, or else go away. Get out of my face. Deal with it. Because, see, that's what happened when I dealt with Romaine, you know, on a real life level, was. I found in him somebody that was willing to not lie about where he was coming from. If he wanted to get slobbering, juicy, all worked up about really getting a chance to blast somebody with scripture, he'd tell you he was going to do that. He'd find out, tell you from scriptures himself, you know, studying in the Bible study, you know, that, you know, I was looking forward to really getting this guy out, just, you know, they were coming in for counseling and I just knew that they were living in sin, you know, they were going to do this and do that, you know, I had all my scriptures lined up and I was ready to just bust them. And then they go and tell me that they changed their mind and that they decided to, you know, separate, you know, and that God had been talking to them and God had been doing that. And the Lord just took my thunder away. He just stole everything I was going to say. Well, at least Romain was honest about how he felt about what he was going to do. Because I know what that's like. I've always wanted to do that. Yeah! Let's grin somebody's neck, Lord. And before I get my hands on them, God solves it. Oh, man. Bummer, dude. You know, God goes and takes my thunder. But you see, 
that's why I get a little frustrated sometimes about why people don't get real and don't be honest with God and don't tell the truth in love. Because, quite frankly, it's obvious. You're sitting in a church. Who do you think can't see what's going on in your life? You're sticking out like a sore thumb. Dare I say how to make a sore thumb? Watch this. You want to know what a sore thumb is? You didn't think I was going to hit my thumb, did you? How stupid are you? <laughs> Come on, get a grip. No way, man. I like my thumb. I'm not going to beat myself. But yet, that's what you're doing when you don't admit the truth to some other Christian in the body of Christ. If one of us suffer, we all suffer. We're suffering looking at you, man. It's disgusting. You know, here you were, some kind of joyful, wonderful, bountiful, bouncing baby boy or girl. You know, and you were also bubbly and juggly and, you know, kind of like cute with big old chicos, you know, and you were smiling and, you know, <laughs> you know, kind of like giddy with, you know, doing what the Lord wants you to do. And then you started coming into church, you know, recently, and you're just like, I'm fine. I'm great. Yep. Everything's under control. It's cool. It's kosher. That's right. I got it. Yep. How you doing? Oh, good. Happy. Goodbye. Please, don't lie. Tell the truth. Because we could see it. I mean, it's not like anybody doesn't know. So, really, if you want to quit hurting us, because we can't stand looking at it, but no, you know, we'll put up with it. If you want to really get real, you are affecting everyone around you, whether you know it or not. You're being a open wound, as it were, and blood is gushing out of your personal issues that you're not willing to be at least honest with so that other people can maybe help you, much less talk to you or pray for you. I mean, come on. You want to be healed? Go ask the elders pray for you. I mean, you might be shocked. might work. might not. <laughs> Never know. Till you try. But you know, I'll be honest, I know it sucks. You see, most of my life, God has kept me poor. So I had to ask other people for help at times. And it sucks. I didn't want to do it either. I've been in, you know, those food lines where they give you a turkey, you know, and they give you some cans, you know, and you make turkey and can. I'm not kidding. But you know, you, you got your Thanksgiving dinner out of a box. You know what I'm saying. You know, and it ain't the box that came from church. It was like the poor line. You know what I'm saying? You got it, right. Now, I specifically would believe that I was brought there for a specific purpose, but, you know, the individual realities of your life may be a little bit different. And I think you'll find that God wants to minister and touch you if you'll be honest with those around you. You don't have to come clean with, you know, every dirty linen that you've got, you know, in your possible drawers, you know, and you got to go through every single one of them and, you know, list out everything that you've ever done in your life. Not interested. We've all been there. We've done it. It's like, you know, yeah, okay, yeah. Tried that too, yeah, did that too, yeah, sure enough, yeah, did that, all right, go ahead. But if you got to get it off your chest, get it off your chest. Tell someone, if you're really not doing good, be real. Don't just come and try to get some band-aid in worship, you know, put on and slapped on, you know, and then get some word, you know, in a quick fix, you know, for Sunday, you know, cruising so that you've got, oh, you put a band-aid over an open wound, you know, and you kind of like, you got your little Bible study in, you know, so that you can kind of like cover it with two aspirin, you know, and then you'll go seven days of misery until you do it again. Get over it. You got to be honest. God knows. God's trying to get you to be real with somebody else that probably has exactly what you need, exactly where you could get some help in time of need. We're told that God is a very present help in time of need. That means he's there. He's not a first responder. He's on the scene. At the scene of the accident was the responder. Hello? You smacked into your deliverance. Yeah, you crashed into it in reality check. That's what happens when it says that God is a very present help in time of need. He's there when you needed it in the first place. Hello? And so, opening up to someone else, at times, is his way of, yes, humbling you, but yes, also reassuring you that you're getting expert help, so that though you may take two aspirin and slap a mandate on it, 
somebody's going to be there in the long term to help sew you up, stitch you together, set the bones in place and get you back on your feet so that you can be healthy, not just forgotten of how bad you're feeling for 24 hours or maybe two hours. When you're wondering if God is enough, how you doing really do it. I would love to knock on your front door and have you invite me in for a cup of coffee and a chat. But since time and distance keep us from doing that, this book must be the next best thing. Or in this case, the video. Hey, here we are. Come on over. <laughs> or in this case, pay attention. Listen up. Got a word for you. If we could just spend some time together when we got past the hi, how are you stage, I would want to know, okay, now, tell the truth. How you do it really? You know, how you, where are you coming from? What's going on in your life? How are you doing on the inside? Are you hurting or feeling like a failure? Are you exhausted, tired of what seems like a rat race through the same old maze of life? Day in, day out, day in, day out, week in, week out. <sighs> are you fighting a battle with disappointment? Are you struggling with depression? Are you discouraged? Are you feeling unloved, and worse, unlovable. Are you questioning God? Wondering why He's allowed things to be the way they are? Maybe you can't even admit this to others for fear they won't understand. After all, you were such a strong man or woman at one time, weren't you? Or they don't know you, because nobody knows you like you. Is there anger in your heart because of excruciating pain or bitter disappointment? Divorce? Try to think of the other word. Um, divorce, separation, messing around, playing around, doing around the town, having an abortion, you know, doing things that, oh my God, if they ever found out, they wouldn't like you anymore. Or so you think that they've never done anything like you've done. Because you, do you feel terrible, absolutely crushed because you've just lost someone, you know, to recent crime or time or whatever may have been, whether your fault or someone else's? Or because your life has not been a normal life, you think you're not fit to be, after all, a Christian? Because you've been rejected or abused, neglected or unloved? Does the future scare you? Are you wondering about your job, if you have one? Are you wondering how you're going to provide for yourself because you don't have one? What about your health? Are you feeling terrible? Are you terrified? Are you wondering how come you feel so good? Do you have cancer? Do you have heart problems or your children? Or are you wondering how you're going to care for your parents when they get old? Or how you're going to provide for your family? What will happen in your old age? Are you worrying? Anxious because you may lose your job or because you can't find work? Worried about the kids, if you have any, or the alimony, if you've got that, or the child support, if you've got that. About how they will turn out, you know, what about what they are into now, and how they don't seem to be the way you wanted them to be. About what they are exposed to, and what's going on in the nation, the school, your community, even maybe your church. What they might get into on their own, drugs, immorality, suicide sex, rebellion, being gay, being homosexual, being experimental. Or maybe all is well in that you just want to go deeper with God. You want a greater consistency of devotion to your Lord Jesus Christ. You want your life, as it was, to be different, less commercial, more centered on your Lord and eternal things. You want your life to have eternal significance. You want to be used by Him more than you ever have been in the past. Whatever your situation, wherever you are, the answer is always the same. God knows you. God knows your plight. God knows what state you're in. He knows exactly where you are and what you are going through. He knows and He wants to give you a future and a hope. Because of this, 
His solution is always an internal one. It's not temporary. It's not like a band-aid. It's not going to be something you got to replace every week, you know, or some kind of like, you know, two aspirins that you got to keep replacing the bottle because you run out after taking so many aspirin that you got a headache from them. But his solution is always not only an internal one, but an all-sufficient one. And if you miss what I'm saying, or if you pass it off, you're going to miss the answer to the void, the emptiness, the hurt, the disappointment, the fear, or the desires that I have mentioned above. The answer is found in a verse of scripture. A child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. God has given you Jesus, his very own son, and in giving you Jesus, he's put the government of your life on his shoulders. You may have been, and you may still be, governing yourself. The governance of God rests in and of Jesus himself. No matter what your situation, feelings, or desires, you have Jesus as your wonderful counselor. He will give counsel to all those that ask and keep asking, to all those that seek and keep seeking, to all those that knock and keep knocking. For surely as you seek, you will find, as you knock, your door shall be opened, as you ask, you shall receive, as Jesus has said you would, and God has promised. Where are you running for help to? Don't run anywhere unless your wonderful counselor tells you to, and then check out all you hear with him. Whatever is said to you, wherever you've gone, however people have failed you, in whatever way that you think that you have heard before these same words, then ask God again to restore to you the wisdom to know when it's from him and not your own misleadings or misguidings. For surely as he has said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not in your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him that he would direct your path, then he would give to every man an answer for him that asks, and he would not withhold from him those that are seeking wisdom. For if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who abradeth not, but giveth to all men liberally. And women too. Imagine that. A wise woman. <laughs> That could be you, or a wise man. He is there to guide you. He is here to sustain you. He cares for you. He is there to govern your life because he is and always has been the king of kings. And you must yield yourself and your life and your problems and your struggles and your hurt to him. Not just in some token way, but maybe even get together with someone and pray. He is the mighty God, sovereign, in control of all. Not permitting any accident in your life. There's no accidental life here. There's no accidents happening to your life. It is in control of God. It has been brought for a purpose. It is there for a design and you have but to ask to understand it from him as he leads you. He is filtering every aspect of your life and the things that concern you through his omnipotent fingers of love, his mighty hand as he holds you in the palm thereof. All that comes into your life will eventually work together for your good and his glory and it will be used to make you like him. If you will but cling to this in faith on the day in which you see him face to face, then you will have no regrets. Just remember you have an eternal father, your father, a daddy, someone who's watching out for you and caring for you, that you can snuggle in his all-sufficient arms. He is the father who is always there, always ready to listen and always able to help and always wanting your best and seeing that you get it. You have but to ask. You have but to cry out. You have but to be broken and contrite. You have but to look. And you will see. You but to open your eyes. And you will know. Because God will be there. I know. He has. He does. And he will. Don't give up. Don't give in.
but turn around and look up to him. He's never too busy and never plays favorites with his other children and is always impartial. If you want to be mightily used by him in his kingdom, he will see that it happens. There's no doubt about that. You can be, no matter where you are today, broken and thinking that you're of no use or been abused. But now God can use you. As long as you listen to him, as long as you obey him, and as long as you serve him without a divided heart, seeking him alone, you will be satisfied with great delight. The problem is we have looked elsewhere for our help and consolation. We have not allowed him to be our all in all. We have taken the government of our lives off his shoulders and we have turned to the arm of flesh, putting band-aids on open wounds and taking two aspirin for sores that will never heal. Are you anxious, troubled, tormented? He is our Prince of Peace. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in him. Trust in him. Peace will reign as long as you obediently cast all your cares upon him. 1 Peter 5, 7 says. So stop being anxious for even one thing, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, make your requests be made known unto him, and when you do, his peace will guard your heart and mind, even as Philippians 4, 6, and 7 tells us. So, let me ask you again, how are you doing, really? What can I join you and enjoin you to pray about? What can I lift up with you to God Almighty and say on your behalf as together we approach Him and ask that He would lead and guide. For He is your Father and He's waiting to hear from you. He is your mighty God, your wonderful Counselor, your Prince of Peace. He has the answer to every one of your questions and He is the solution to every problem, the wisdom for every decision. Hebrews 2.13 says, I will put my trust in him, and I will not be ashamed. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells you to trust in the Lord with all your heart. My greatest realization was that if I acknowledge there is a God at all, then he must be God. And I can trust him for who he is because he is God. Father, in the hearts of those who want to be used and especially to those who have been abused, for every person that has felt the breaking thereof, of their life, their heart, their soul, their being, their emotions, their jobs, their ministry, their marriages, in every breakings that you have allowed to happen in their life, oh God, Reveal your will. Reveal your healing. Reveal your tender heart to them who have come poor in spirit, crying out for the kingdom of heaven to come on earth and that they should be welcomed into the kingdom of God as they are. God, hear my cry. Meet their plea from bended knee where they are and be thou almighty, omnipotent, with all sufficient grace for every one of their sins that they've ever committed in where they are in their place this day and in this night and in this way that you have chosen to bring them today to be honest, to be real, to be truthful, to say, I don't feel good. I hurt. I ache. I need God meet that need be there Jesus because I can't go across this camera and be there with you but Jesus can and you know he has he's in you he's with you he'll never leave you and the reason I know he's never left me and believe me even I've left me at times. God bless you because he's with you. Don't ever doubt that. You may not see it right now, 
but you will very, very soon. Just call. Just ask. Just seek. Just cry out for the living God. And He will reveal Himself to you as not only Jesus or your Father or the Spirit of God, but as the living God.